I haven't really read the details on it because, again, like I said, I'm not really into politics. But this segues really nicely into this issue happening at the moment with this DJ called Constantine. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the whole topic, right? But there's this DJ called Constantine, a techno DJ, who's kind of really suffering at the moment, right? He's kind of going through a real public battering. So, um, late, I think the other day, I think the other week or some sometime recently, especially during festival month, um, this DJ called Constantine was booked, a techno DJ was booked to play at ADE, right? A Dutch festival. And then um, straight away, um, loads of um, activist groups um, centered around protecting of women in nightlife kind of like were protesting the decision and kind of hounding out the event booker and questioning why he booked um, this Constantine guy. And the reason why it's driving so much con controversy is because um, Constantine, I think sometime last year, gave an interview where he displayed very misogynistic views um, against women within the electronic or within the underground, underground electronic dance scene, right? And he kind of said something along the lines of, some during an interview with a german magazine that he thought uh women got an easier run at the game of djing than men did right especially if they're attractive he kind of felt as if like it wasn't a it wasn't an even playing field um some would some say he said it in kind of with uh tongue in cheek some say he said it um with malicious intent and then um as soon as the article came out people like black madonna and a few others detailed their experiences uh in person anecdotal as they may be but they detailed their own personal experiences with this constantine dude and supposedly uh, he had ex displayed uh, misogynistic views to them too right so I'm going to get some of the topic here to explain some of it, but it does kind of segue a lot into kind of what um, happened with this uh, Kavanaugh dude, kind of, right? La, la, la. So this is a top, this is an article on uh, Mixmag that I'm going to put up, put in the show notes too, so you can read it yourself. But the article is like um, entitled Love Island, Ex Love, Love Land Explains Decision to Book um, Constantine During ADE. Love Island's head booker Robert Deutsch has responded to an online petition calling for a removal of Constantine from the lineup of the three parties he has been booked to play at Dutch Capital during ADE, Amsterdam Dance Event. Constantine is set to play at a party Love Land is throwing in collaboration with Circo Loco in Amsterdam, spot uh, Haven, Media Heaven during ADE on October 20th. More than 700 people have signed a petition that has launched due to comments made by Constantine in an interview with German Groove magazine last year. In, in which he said um, women get undeserved levels of attention in the music industry. Speaking to Mix Mag on the phone, the booker who booked Constantine said, if these remarks are true, I, I don't stand behind them. I'm against them. It's a stupid thing to say, but it goes way too far to scrutinize somebody for the rest of their lives and boycott stuff. If you think the guy's a dick, then don't come to his shows. But we live in a society where we should talk to each other and persuade each other in and persuade each other in a normal open communication. We shouldn't be living in a society where we just come where we where just because someone says something, we'll all try to ruin someone's life. He also continues and says, I thought it was already a water under the bridge because it happened last year. This petition was a surprise to us. I don't think this will happen. This will help the conversation or the discussion in any way. Uh, la, la, uh, da, da. Uh, um, and he stresses at the bottom of his statement the, the booker for Love, Love Land that booked Constantine um, this happened 18 months ago I thought it was water under the bridge this was not. This was a surprise to us I don't think it's going to help the conversation at all don't misquote me too like Constantine was the bottom line is that of course we are against any form of hate we are called Love Land for a reason hate doesn't have a place in our scene I think talking to people and discussing things openly especially at ADE which is a conference should be a good chance to discuss go up to him and ask his point of view he hasn't given us any reason apart from his interview which said out was out was out of context haven't seen any proof that says really um he has hatred against women in any way we shouldn't jump to conclusions so in the interest of clarity this is the article that he mentioned that women get an easier draw it's uh i'm not sure if you'll be, really be able to translate it says that women get an even what it says here oh you have to activate your ad blocker let me see if I can pause it for one moment on this website and see if I can run it. Pause on this site. He says something along the lines of like, he doesn't feel... Let me see if he was out of quote, if he was quoted, you know, out of context. Because it might have been a joke, right? He might have just been like kiddingly about it. Like, oh, I wish I was a six foot two blonde female with big tits and I did it the way I did because I'll be far further ahead of life, right? It could be just one of those kind of jokes that, you know, didn't land that well, especially if you're being interviewed by a quote unquote feminist, right? Um... Sometimes you can, I, that, I made that mistake of making kind of like misogynistic kind of like quote unquote jokes that would work with somebody else 
Or maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they're kind of like distasteful, but sometimes you need to read your audience, right? And you probably didn't read his audience. But again, I'm not sure because it's translated in German. I don't sure if, it's, if you'll be able to even to say it. Um, giggling fucked up on it. What do you say? Women. What do you say? Women. Anyway, I don't know what exact... You can't find the exact quote exactly, but um, the kind of... It did the rounds, right? That this dude, Constantine was misogynistic and he kind of had these really um prehistoric or really uh, you know old school ideas of what you know he kind of he kind of prescribed to the idea that women weren't funny you know that whole comedian thing that came out when um uh, that kind of trope was being um spoken about in public now there has to be we have to have an honest conversation right about um music industry in general or the entertainment world and there needs to be an honest conversation that needs to exist in underground culture, right? But I think this t topic is interesting because what the booker says, I kind of agree by and large, right? I think, which goes back to the whole Kavanaugh issue, right? I think if he said something out of context or if he said something mean, so something distasteful, something that wasn't nice, something that hurt people's feelings last year, should he still be suffering? Should he still not be able to make a living this year? That's just like an easy question that someone could should be able to answer, right? If you do something bad, right? If you hurt someone's feelings, right? If you take the piss out of somebody, right? If you joke around somebody who's not your friend and they don't take it the right way, right? Should you be held accountable for that for a year? Now, you could say yes if I don't apologize, right? Or if I continue to be a dick about something or if I act like I didn't do anything wrong, if I don't take your feelings into consideration, right? Because sometimes um, the only way you can risk the only way you can risk offense is by being open and having an open dialogue. But if I do offend you in some way, shape or form, you should be able to say, I guess, you know, that really hurt my feelings. Um, and I should be, and if I value the friendship or the, the relationship that we have, I should be man enough or I don't have to say, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean that. But if it hurts your feelings, I am sorry because I want you to feel better about it. So I apologize. So if I do that, it should be okay. It should be one of the bridge. But if I don't do that, should you still hate me for a year? I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know how grudges work in that respect, right? Um, but if someone makes a mistake in the public eye, right, should they be held accountable for that for a year? Should they be not able to earn any money ever again? And what what deems an appropriate response? What is acceptable? What can people what are people okay with? What's gonna be all right? What's gonna make you feel better? Right? So if I'm concertine, I said something deplorable, such as, you know, women get a far easier run at the entertainment industry or becoming a DJ than men do, which you know, some could argue is true, some could argue is not true. I would probably tend to side more along the lines of that. It's probably not true. I think everyone that's played in a bar, anyone that's played in a nightclub but there's one person, anyone that's played at an art gallery where no one cares about if you're there and the table's too low and you have to bend your back and move around your controller, anyone that's played in shitty events venues knows that that come up regardless of how hot you are or how good you are that come up is brutal it exists for everybody i'm sure for open 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 mic comedians or comedians in general doing open mic set exists right Being, playing in a bar playing in a in a uh during someone's bar mitzvah where everyone's got their back to you where people are eating and shit people have to people have to wade through piles of shit in order to get to where they have to get to everyone does right some people might have a shorter journey because they are attractive which is you know we live in the entertainment industry by um if you live, if you're in the entertainment industry, you have to accept that there is some level of superficial um, qualities that are maybe rewarded in that respect because it's the entertainment industry. People do want to see nice things, you know, great lighting, great stage design, um, a DJ wearing a funny T-shirt, and it could extend to even looks or appearances, right? That can kind of play into it. It's not something that um, people should kind of act like doesn't exist, right? When Seth Troxler was kind of coming up during the beginnings, right? Some of the reason why he was very popular or someone people that really liked in the same sort of vein as Jack Master was because he was this larger than life character who kind of dressed funny right who kind of waved his arms around the air behind the booth had a real cool look about him that contributed to his um overall star power now it did help that he's an amazing crate digger he's one of the best djs that we have in the scene but his overall package helped to kind of get him where he needs to get to we can't ignore that that's very much true but to say categorically that women have it easier than men it's quite stupid right because i don't care how hot you are right djing is djing right if you can't dj you can't dj and if you're DJing somebody somewhere and you happen to be hot, but you're shit, the crowd will dictate whether or not you get booked or not. 
promoters, uh, bar managers, event bookers are very black and white. Did you bring enough? Did you bring people into the into the space? Were people enjoying their time in the space? Are people requesting you to come back into the space? If that's true, and you look like a gargoyle, you look like uh, Giselle, um, you look like Naomi Campbell, uh, you look like me, right? You look like a thumb. It doesn't matter. If you're able to bring people, if you're able to put bums on seats, and you're good at what you do, right? You will get booked again and again and again. Now, if you're very attractive, if you happen to be a Victoria's Secret model, and you can DJ like Black Madonna, or you can DJ as technically proficient as Dixon, right? You are obviously going to be get better opportunities than somebody else would. That's obvious. That's completely fine. I think that's something that people have to kind of come to grips with and, and understand that that's okay. I've got some. I know some people. I've got friends. Some of them happen to be female who happen to be very attractive, very good-looking women. I've said to them categorically, right? You are a very technically gifted DJ, but you also, you also, you also have to make an effort in some regard, right? To accentuate your beauty in order to kind of give your record playing um, the, the, the kind of panache it deserves, right? That extra little spice on top of it. Why not? You're an attractive girl and you're really fucking good at DJing. Use it. Now, I'm not saying to whore yourself out. I'm not saying to over-sexualize yourself, but it, it would be it would be remiss if you didn't somehow recognize what you have directly in your hands. It's kind of similar to some of these models who are activists, right? Who kind of champion charities, who kind of go to parts of Africa or parts of um, parts of the Middle East and kind of give back, right? They use they use the fact that they're a model. They use the fact that they have this platform in order to kind of ex in order to kind of preach their message, right? To kind of um, extend their platform, to raise their platform up in order to kind of reach more people. It's, uh, it makes it makes sense. People should do that. If you're famous, if you've got money, if you've got the resources and you want to do things, you should be able to tap into it in order to kind of further your message. If people call you a sellout, if people say you're subject, you're sexualizing yourself, they can go and fuck themselves. People don't know what's in your heart. Your, your intentions are pure. You know what you're doing. Um, you want to get further in your career. You want to put money in your bank. You want to feed your children. Do what you have to do. But I don't think what Constantine said, if he said what he said, is that crazy? But I also don't think what he said is right. I don't think women do get a further, uh, uh, an easier run of the game because I just think everyone has to go through the shit. Everyone has to go through the shit. But should he be suffering? Should he be not be able to earn a living forever because he did this? I don't think that's fair either. And then in response to this whole outrage, the, the people that are putting the petition up on the internet, people that were pissed that he was getting booked, uh, they writ, they written FAQ um, response, right? I'm assuming because, again, I don't know what's happening on social, but I'm assuming they were getting a lot of stick on social media uh, because they were kind of hounding somebody out that made a comment, you know, a year ago that was maybe taken out of context. That might have been a joke, might not have been a joke, whatever, right? So they kind of detailed this FAQ of their intentions of why they're kind of going after uh, Constantine, right? And it's fairly kind of straightforward. It, it's, not, I mean, they've got some, they've got some points here that make some sense, right? So this is the following. <clears throat> Um, don't welcome sexism at ADE, remove Constantine from the lineups, right? Frequently asked questions. Why target Constantine in particular? Constantine is a good example of sexism that is prevalent in the music industry. It's well documented in an interview with him alongside counter statements from promoters and DJs about their personal encounters with him. We know sexism isn't exclusive to him, nor to giggling, yet this is in the public eye. How we deal with this sets an example that people will remember. If we continue to let him perform, curate at festivals and hold showcases without his actions being um, adequately addressed, then we're sending a very clear message about how seriously we take sexism and subsequently how little we value women, which is fucking crazy. Right? That's loaded with so many presuppositions. Like, it's insane. But we're going to kind of run through it. Um, why do we think sexism is a problem in industry? Oh, that sexism by male DJ makes the scene inaccessible and dangerous for women. Arguing that women are less talented, less capable, feeds into the women getting few opportunities, less pay, less visibility and space. Those claims that only the quality of music matters do not recognize or care that there are systematic barriers in place uh, which may, many of us face, leaving this instance of overt sexism unchecked as a broader impact on what is seen as acceptable level of respect to be given to women and other marginalized groups within the industry. Um, it continues, why this is necessary if he has already apologized? Constantine has done nothing in a way of public remorse, which is something we should kind of highlight there, right? When he shared his quote-unquote regret, it was not an apology, but merely an, uh, a means to defend, to deflect responsibility. In this case, he blamed the journalist for not understanding his sense of humor. 
which probably wasn't a good thing to do. Isn't isn't this just hearsay? Is there any proof of his views? The problem with this question is that it's the, is that the scene is not inclined to believe women, and many people would rather discredit individuals that deal with large issues of sexism. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Is what he said true or not? It's not about discrediting women. Like, we should not, we shouldn't believe all women. We shouldn't believe all men. We shouldn't believe all dogs. We shouldn't believe all kids. Don't believe everyone, right? Believe them when they give you proof that you believe them. When they give you a reason to believe them. You shouldn't just believe somebody off the bat. People are fucking nuts, man. People make up the most horrendous shit. If you've worked in retail and you've sold someone an item on sale and you've clearly marked on a receipt that it's non-refundable and then they come back the next day and say they want to get a refund and they act like they didn't know you told them that and they act like they didn't see it on the receipt, that person's lying. Should I believe all women when she comes back and says that? Is that believe all women? What the fuck is this? Believe all women. Jesus Christ, don't believe anyone. Respect is earned. Belief is earned too. If you're constantly lying to me, what, we all knew that kid in school who used to lie about the games he had. Consistently lie about the computer games he had. Oh, I've got this, I've got that. I've got this game, I've got that game. Then whenever you tried to go around his house, you'd be like, oh, my mum's in. Oh, my mum's ill. Oh, I'm not allowed to come in. Oh, the house is a mess. There was always an excuse. Then you find out he didn't have anything. He just lied. He might have a reason to lie because he felt left out, but he lied. He lied. Kids lie. People lie. Women lie. Men lie. We all lie. Believe. Cuh. Anyway, it continues. We shouldn't need to debate whether or not Constantine is a sexist. Yes, we do. Just because someone, just because you've got anecdotal proof that he said bad things to women in the industry, again, anecdotal, we don't know if it's something that he carries widespread. We should still be able to debate something. We shouldn't be able to say, oh, because you said one thing, you insistently are that thing. Like, huh? There is, a simp there is simple proof of his views. The article was supported by testimonies from many people, including Black Madonna, Disco Woman, uh, Tal Kaiman, Kleiman, a promoter, and Olin, another DJ. So, four women have come up and said, you know, this guy's a bit of a shithead. Of course. Cool. I take back what I said before. Maybe he is a shithead. Maybe he does have some, anti uh, uh, some really prehistoric views on women. Maybe he does have a problem with women. Maybe he was shafted when he was younger by a woman somehow. Or he's always felt as if he hasn't got the success he needs to be because he's not pretty or whatever. Maybe he has got a problem with women. Cool. But not everyone is like this. He's just a fucking muppet. Of course. No worries. So, um, why do you think AD, AD is taking time? Is, 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 why do you think, it continues, why do you think ADE is the time to take a stand? AD is the world's largest festival and business conference for electronic music. It's also the city we live in. <clears throat> We're tired. Uh, we deal with sexism in the, in the music industry on a daily basis. We've spoken about countless times, but we are definitely not the first to be taking a stand against this and we're moving on from others' momentum. So, l largely, right, largely, I agree with some points in this um, in this FAQ, right, from the organizers of this protest against Constantine being removed from the ADE festival because I think um, ADE kind of, you know, that kind of tone deafly um, said that he's going to be part of a panel against... No, they're going to discuss... There's going to be a panel to do with, like, sexual sexual, um, sexual assault or something along the lines of in the music industry. Constantine's going to be on a panel, which is really tone deaf and really in bad taste, right? Considering what he's been accused of, it doesn't make any sense of why he should be on that panel. It's not going to be... It's, there's no, no good will come of it, right? People are going to be on there and attacking him. He's going to be booed whenever he comes on the mic. It makes no sense, right? No one's going to... No one looks good in this situation. And if you read further, I, I read some um, tweets that I found on, on Inter, I mean on Twitter and I found some other comments on some other Facebook pages that supposedly um, after this whole interview happened where he said he, does, he thinks women get a far easier run to be um, in the music industry than men did, he played, um, in order to kind of make up and to kind of um, uh, fix his public image, like an idiot, he decided to do a back-to-back -back set with some female somewhere in a festival somewhere. And obviously, it, you know, it came across as fucking tone deaf as ADE putting him on a panel about sexual assault right or about i don't know um <laughs> what you call it um whatever that panel is on ade right it came across very tone deaf and you know devoid of any sort of humility of any sort of real sincerity um so much so that the people that are at that rave started throwing things at him when he was djing like not like not and so much so they had to stop his set like supposedly this happened right so he's been he's been a bit of a social pariah within the music industry for a while now he hasn't been able to make a living i'm assuming for a, or a consistent living for a good while and now he's kind of kind of coming up back from the parapet and kind of you know pulling the curtain back and trying to make a big run for it so if he said something bad last year should he be still be punished for it now i don't know 
is there an issue with women being represented in the music industry at the moment? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't think it's a categoric. Yes, I think it's a categoric. No. I think in the same fashion that I get annoyed, right? For instance, like one man's one of my favorite DJs, technically, right? He's an amazing guy. I love what he does, right? But he doesn't half like a fucking throwback vintage set, right? I just saw him promote something recently the other day about taking it back to the 90s or taking it back to some sort of era, right? He's always kind of harking back to the old school garage, grime days. Every set he plays is stuff that, you know, was released 10, 12 years ago, right? It's never anything. It's never, it's not a lot of current shit. And that could be said for a lot of DJs who kind of play quote unquote urban music within the London scene, right? If you go to a hip hop club for the most part, uh, especially a scene to hip hop club, most of them play quite old songs, right? Old hip hop sets. Like you look at people like Live and Proof, who've kind of made a bit of a pivot to contemporary stuff, but for the most part, most of it is like kind of harking back to the old school stuff because a lot of the people that are behind Live and Proof have very strong opinions about the current state of music at the moment, right? So of course that will kind of extend to their DJ sets. But I have kind of been moan the fact that you can't sometimes go to a club and hear the things that you are hearing on soundcloud hear the things that you're hearing on um hip-hop forums hear the things that you're hearing on spotify now there could be an argument to be said that some of that stuff only exists on the internet and people in real life don't actually listen to Lil uzi vert some people could actually say that and i don't agree with it but it could be true but there isn't there doesn't exist a space that 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 kind of music can kind of be played out loud um, from 9 to 2 a.m you have to kind of subject yourself to someone playing a tribe called Quest again and again and again. Same old shit, right? So if there's no, if, if, if I feel like there's not enough representation of uh, music as it is now, it's only, it's, it only makes sense to kind of extend the argument and say that maybe um, the populace who attends, who attends nightclubs, people that go in it, aren't necessarily reflected in the lineups of the club, right? Because by and large, a lot of DJs, uh like me for instance who kind of i dj in my spare time as a hobby um you start to dj because you go to nightclubs because you go out and have a good time and you start to be like oh wow this is amazing you connect to the music you connect with the performer or the person dj man addiction like oh I, I would love to do that that's how most people discover what they want to do right you sit down you watch uh, an eddie murphy um special for the first time in your life and you realize wow i'm the class clown i like to make people laugh this guy's doing it at a really high level i'd love to some someday do that right watching football whatever you start, you need a, you need you need a you need direct experience of it you need to see it in real life in order for you to realize that maybe you could do it yourself so a lot of kind of that djing culture happens because people attend nightclubs right and if you go to a nightclub it's probably one of the most democratic places you'll see in the world especially if you go to one of the major nightclubs in berlin or in london or in places in barcelona right you'll see the world reflected in a nightclub right every color every creed every race every sexuality right um Every sexual orientation like will exist in that kind of in that in that enclave of that of that safe space of a nightclub. So in that safe space of a nightclub, you're not gonna get only dudes, you're not gonna get only women, you're not gonna get only straight people, you're not gonna get only gay people. They're, everyone's gonna everyone across the kind of um social um and kind of uh social and you know social hierarchy exists in that kind of melting pot so it makes only sense that you should have a, a lineup that reflects that, right? But sometimes some promoters or some event organizers are quite lazy because they only pick the top 5% DJs who are going to guarantee a crowd. Now, it's lazy, but then also on the promoter side of it, they also have responsibility to make sure that they make money on the event and they're able to pay back their investors, they're able to pay back their staff, they're able to pay their debts. There is a real responsibility to make sure you make money or you at least break even. So sometimes it feels like you can't take the chance because you're not sure if people are going to come to an event where they don't know who the DJs are, right? Which is why places like Berlin are really successful and do really well because they have the culture of the resident DJ that exists there, right? Where if you go to CDV, Club de Visionaire, you go to Prince Charles, you rarely go to those places because of the lineup. You go there because you know it's going to be a good time. It's a great club. Bergheim, Panorama, but being the same sort of thing. If the DJ happens to be great, amazing some people go to a Bergheim on sunday morning blind they just go and queue up because they just want to go out and stay until monday morning they don't care who's playing right so that happens quite often right so with that you can take more chances with lineup but mostly in london it's kind of place like that you don't really get that right in most, most european city people just go with the safe option i want to book the the top 10 djs um voted by dj mag or mix mag or resident advisor when they do their list and then you know that's guaranteed so because of that some people suffer 
male DJ stuff who are really good and female DJ stuff because they're really good. But I would imagine by the most part of it, just because of the lifestyle that electronic music demands, right? Being away from your family, working um, unsociable hours. I would imagine, again, just just from up, just looking looking from the outside looking in, I would imagine there's probably less D, there's probably less female DJs than male DJs. I'll just imagine just because of the lifestyle um, that DJing kind of uh, requires, right? Staying up late. Um, Maybe, particip maybe partaking in a lot of drugs, a lot of drinking, a lot of socializing, being away from your family. Guys typically can maybe put up with it a lot easier than women can, by and large. Some women can do it anyway, but I'm just saying, by and large, it seems as if that might be the case. If that is the case, and there is, there is less women DJs than male DJs, right, just because of pure preference, right, then, and let's say promoters are lazy and they don't, and they only book the top 5% DJs, whether they're male or female. It's only, it only makes, it's only logical that some people will get left behind. Some people will get left out and feel like they're not being represented. Whether it's by race, color, creed, sexuality, they'll feel like they're not being represented, which is completely fine. But I think it's a bigger issue than just saying it's the promoter's fault. It's kind of, we all, are, we all kind of contribute to it, right? If I'm only going to print works because Nina Kravis is playing, that isn't good, right? Because that means that if another female DJ plays who I don't know, I won't go, which would then hamper her chance of getting booked again because they'll notice the, the numbers going down. They'll see Nina Kravis, but, uh, but uh, what do you call it? Packed out the entire place, no queues going around the corner for four hours. And they'll see this known, this no name girl who's kind of really good, but hasn't had, doesn't have to draw Nina Kravis. People didn't support her at all. And it was, and it was kind of empty. And they had to close the thing early because they couldn't um, pay for everyone that was working that day. So we kind of contribute to it. Um, by and large but it's a problem bigger than Constantine it's not just a Constantine issue it's something that kind of uh, runs deep within the entertainment industry overall which is why um, we see issues with kind of whitewashing in Hollywood right where there's an Asian movie or like The Last Samurai and they cast someone like Tom Cruise in it they kind of had to do that because um, by and large um, us the paying customer we've kind of shown them that we're only going to attend a movie when we know who the person is that's starring in it We've told them this, right? Um, inadvertently through our actions, we've told them that we oh, we only give a shit if we know who that person is. If we don't know who that person is, we're not going to attend it. Which then hampers the chances of somebody else who's unknown being able to uh, is an unknown Asian actor who can kind of play that role to a T, taking that role. So it's kind of a bigger issue overall. I see what they're trying to get at. I see that sometimes a stand needs to be taken at it, but I do think they're kind of aiming their ire at the wrong person. And I think if this guy is a bit of a muppet and he has got some really um prehistoric views on women and he does he does subscribe to the whole idea that women find it easy because they have to wear a short skirt and just show their tits and then they can play the bird kind he's a fucking idiot right he should be publicly shamed for it he's a dumb dumb but should he lose his entire livelihood for the for his entire life because he didn't say sorry i don't know maybe not and why should you say sorry if he doesn't if he doesn't if he doesn't mean it right if he really doesn't mean it and he really believes that he thinks if a woman puts on a short skirt and shows her cleavage that she's going to get booked to the bird kind, if you think that's true b b before he does, then he's the one that's going to lose out. I think people in the industry will realize that that guy's a do donut. It happens a lot in the movie industry, right? I heard a lot of people say in the movie, uh, some comedians say in the podcast thing that if you've, if you've ever sat down and wondered, oh, where's so-and-so that used to be in movies? If you say that out loud, it's because that person's a dick and people within the music, um, the movie industry business don't want to work with him so they stop giving him opportunities that's why you don't hear about these kind of people so you so so even though we feel as if sometimes even though some some people and especially women sometimes feel as if people go unpunished for their actions if you're a dick by and large you get your comeuppance no one is safe right we've seen it with a guy from cnbc losing his job les Munev or something right so allegations came up the me too movement has proved no one is safe right if you're a dick you're going to get called out for it and you're going to lose your job so by and large it's been quite effective right the people that are dicks the people that are taking the piss the people that were horrible that were treating people with this with contempt and were rude they've all been kicked out right they've all been punished it's happened it's happened by and large right but i also think there has to exist this lane or this space for dicks like constantine to exist where you can say stupid shit that no one agrees with and by and large his bookings just dry up and if he doesn't say sorry he doesn't get booked again forever but if he says sorry okay we welcome you back into the fold go and play go and dj again now i think that should be allowed that there should be that kind of journey it exists but if he doesn't want to say sorry and he wants to risk his career for it because he generally thinks women get booked women get more bookings than him because they're just women 
which is a dumb idea, then he should be allowed to brew in his stupidity and just not get booked anywhere because everyone's going to think he's a donut. But let's not cancel him. Let's not silence him. Let's not throw shit at him when he's DJ. It makes no sense. Like the, like the promoter said for ADE, if you really don't agree with what he's, what, 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 what he's saying, I don't know, protest outside the club or maybe not protest outside the club. Let people enjoy it if they want to enjoy it, but just don't go to his show. I think that's fine. Just don't go to his show. Like, let's protest with our feet. Let's just make it... Um, let it let it hurt let them let, let let them feel the hurt in their pocket it, the, a lot of a lot, i i kind of say this a lot about football fans right they will bitch and moan about things that are happening in a boardroom but some of them won't stop going to games they won't stop buying merch but the only way that they, you're they're gonna listen to you is if you stop giving them money that's the only thing they care about if you keep complaining and waving your fucking 20 pound uh scars up in the air every time in the stadium it doesn't do anything you have to step away sacri you have to sacrifice something like sacrifice actual sacrifice monetarily reputation wise whatever it may be you have to sacrifice something in order to actually get what you need but it doesn't require you you know shouting somebody down or deplatforming. i don't think that's actually a thing i think societally we do that quite effectively anyway if this guy's um set broadcasting these really stupid prehistoric views then by and large no one's gonna go to shows like, this guy's an idiot i'm not gonna go watch this guy play he thinks cleavage is are the reason why women get booked like fuck him which ones do you know i mean it'll, it'll happen quite naturally you just you just wither and die over time but if he apologizes too he should be allowed to be welcome back into fold if he doesn't want to apologize he should be able to told, be told to fuck himself but it's it's again like i said i think privileges exist in djing and they exist in any sort of industry they do exist people lean into it right some people who are you know come from a very rough background always talk about the rough background they come into because they know it kind of gives them a bit of an edge in an industry where everyone's a bit of a puritan or everyone came from a private school saying that you dropped out and you kind of learn on the streets can give you a bit of an edge can give you a bit of an advantage over people it's good it's good to it's good to kind of use your whatever whatever kind of disadvantage or advantage that you have to further your career in some respects right whether you're attractive whether you come from a bad background whether you have an interesting come up whatever it may be i'm sure virgil part of virgil's kind of appeal of him djing and reason why he gets booked in a lot of places is because he's a designer for off-white his own company is because he's a creative director for louis vuitton men's because he has a collaboration with nike that helps that adds to the appeal of him djing so to say that if you're a big DJ, you're like, oh, Virgil's only going to get booked because he's got a brand. Yeah, that's true. As it should be. It's more interesting. It's more of a compelling story that he's got a, he's, 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 he's operating an 80, what, well, I don't know. Let's say um, he's operating two, three businesses, employing more than 80 people at a time, right? Whilst juggling uh, four collections a year. And he's also DJing all around the world. That should also add to his law. That's actually a good thing. Like, if you're just a solo DJ guy who doesn't make records and just DJs, then you should, like, f like that's that's not as interesting as that story. I'm sorry. Make your story more interesting, but that isn't as interesting as that story. And that privilege, it's okay to use that advantage, lean into it. But I don't know, man. I don't know what's going to happen with Constantine, dude. He sounds like a, a, a total dick. If he was playing, I wouldn't go. And just vote with your feet, I think, in my opinion.